As you know, you can start a journal at any time of year, but it's especially fun to start at the beginning of a year. And I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm not painting today, but I'm going to start a journal using an old book. So this is called an altered book journal. And this book is actually was one that was in my family bookshelves called A Station Wagon in Spain, which I actually read a few years ago. It's quite fun. I also wanted to let you know of a really exciting development. Uh, in my store this week, it's brand new. I've got planner pages that are, are blank, so you can use them however you want to. Lots of different options. And they're all just printable. And in this size, one thing I tried was, this was a little bit daring, I think, was I tea dyed some paper to use in this journal and put that through the printer. I ironed it first so it was nice and flat and I did cringe when I heard it crackling through my printer, but it did come out fine. So one thing that you can use these for is just to, you know, cut out pieces that you want to use. If you're using a smaller book like this, you don't, obviously that's not going to fit, or you can resize them if you've got the program or technology. So I hope you um, have a look at those. Just go to summerbaystudio.com in the shop, you'll find those. What I really like about this book is the deco edges on the paper. So it's going to be really fun putting together this journal. Now, I gave some thought the other day to the projects, what you could do with a journal, whether you did what's called a junk journal, which is a lot of artistic creative collaging, but there's also so many other ways you can use a journal. And a friend of mine asked me one day what I used a journal for, and it gave, gave me sort of pause to think about it. So I wrote this little list, and um, here are some ideas. You can, you can use it for, as kind of a meditation, because any creative work is kind of like a meditation. You can use it for an archive of your life or a period in your life. If you're going on a trip, for example, that's an archive of that event. But you can also use it ongoing and do a year at a time or a month at a time or whatever. You can use it as art therapy, which is wonderful as well. You can use it as a planner or a photo album or just an art practice or a, just a creative project. It's like fun to do. Uh, also for self-expression, for motivation, you can fill it with quotes and a, just a private space to record parts of your life or your feelings or your thoughts. So there's lots of wonderful ways that you can use a journal. Now, in this case, I took off the, this paper leaf and it stuck on the cover because it probably got wet at some time in its past. So I won't be using any of that today. I love this blue, but because of this, I decided I'm going to cover it up. It's also a little bit banged up in the corners. It's been around. So what I'm going to do is cover it front and back with this beautiful paper and then also put it, um, an extra spine piece on. So let's get started on that. I've done the measurements for this, so my piece is going to be, if I measure this correctly, this is for the front and the back, six inches wide. And then because it has to fold over, I'm going to take inches off here. Now I have to decide which which pieces I want, where I want the design to, to go. This is blue into white and this is blue into pink and I think I like this one for the front and I'll do the other one for the back even though I like this part here. Yeah, I, I really love this soft pink. So I need to cut these 12 inch pieces. Right, I want this, I want more blue, less white. And in this case, I want more pink, less blue. So make sure I've got this right. All right, so I just take two inches off here by lining it up like this. Make sure that's good and straight. Now there we have our, our piece for the front cover and the reason it's larger is because it has to go around the edges here. So I'm going to score these at approximately, it's about three quarters of an inch. 
or a centimeter and a half for the fold over so that, that it will come into the inside here similar to how this is and then I'll put a frontispiece in here. There's my piece of cover and I've scored it using a kind of a wider score piece because this is a bit heavier paper. Let's see, it's, this is a cardstock and I'm just going to fold it along these lines make sure it fits the cover properly. And tucks in around here. Almost needs two score lines because of the thickness of the paper. So I'm going to do that. There, as you can see, I've put two score lines in and the reason is just the thickness of the, the cardboard cover here. So we'll fold those in as well. So both lines will be folded in so it makes almost a little a little box edge and then we'll glue it on. Now you can see how smoothly this goes around the corners of the cover or the edges of the cover. So what I want to do is glue that down and then we'll deal with the corners. For this I'm using Aline's clear tacky glue your gel tacky glue and I'm not going to put it on the flaps. I'm just going to put it on the main body of the cover here. And I have this little spatula I bought at a dollar store. I'm just going to spread it around a little bit so it, it'll make a nice solid, uh, i.e. not lumpy finish under the paper. Fairly quickly with that so that it doesn't start to dry. Okay, let's see how this goes. Now, in order to get these corners to lie flat on the inside of the cover, I'm going to just trim them like this and see how this works. I might as well do the other one at the same time. I'm cutting them at an angle because I don't want to, it just to be a, a straight flap. So I'm going to just do one at a time. Put a reasonable amount of glue on there and just spread it out with this little spatula. to go over the edge like this so I need a piece, a piece of paper towel for fingers and whatnot and I'm just going to press this in and so I don't have to stand here and hold it I'm going to use some of these little clips just so it's nice and nice and solidly pressed down. I discovered on the front cover that the clips weren't a good idea because they tended to make a little bit of a an indent and I don't want that so I kind of went over it again with this bone folder and cleaned out those just burnished those the surface so instead of using clips I'm using this just to make sure it's a good stick all the way across there now I've done the front and the back covers this is nice and pressed down and now I'm going to add the spine so for the spine I've chosen this cut this paper which I think is so pretty and goes so nicely with this so I'm just I'm just gonna measure this and then we can apply it 
So here's the piece for the spine, and I'm just going to give it a really gentle fold in the center so that I know exactly where that's going to go down the center of the spine. So it should wrap around like that. And I'm going to just put it on and then indent these pieces here once it's on. I'm finding with this glue that it makes the paper almost damp, so maybe I'm just using too much, but I want this right to the edges. Now, there's the beautiful exterior of the book. I just re I love it. I just really love it. It's so pretty. And now, that, that can just sit and dry, and we're going to work on the frontispiece. I've decided to use this piece for the inside of the covers, and I had originally planned to, to put it all the way across, but it's quite a heavy paper, and I think I'll leave this uh, blank for now, and then, you know, use it put something else on it when I'm ready. So I'm going to cut these pieces and glue them into place and then we'll see how that looks. All right, here are my pieces and I just need to glue them in just like that, just inside so there's a little bit of an edge here. Getting it right into the corners and the edges is really important because they'll pop up if you don't. I mean, you can always lift it and put more glue in, but it's nice if you can just get them glued down from the start. And this little tool is perfect for that. You can use it to get things right to the edges. My intention for this book is to have it be sort of a creative journal where I will add little watercolors and photos because I received this little Instax for Christmas as a gift and I can't wait to start start printing the little photos right from my phone. Look how gorgeous that is. And I'll do the other one. There, there is our beautiful book with its pretty cover. So there's covers front and back. I love this, it's so pretty. And then this is in the interior. I will be working away at it over the course of the year, that's my goal. I want to make it an archive of my year and so a lot of the pages will come out and will be replaced by watercolors or photos or whatever. But I love the sort of yellowy look of the paper and just having print in the background so there's lots of fun things that I have in mind for the year. I hope that you will do a project like this with me. I would love to know that you're following along and we can do it kind of as a course if you want but it will just be follow along with my YouTube channel and you'll get the notifications. Be sure to subscribe and click that little bell so that you get notified when there's a new one but this is going to be one of my projects for 2021 and I think it's going to be super fun. Now my glue is dry and this is the cover, the front, spine and back. Now all I have to do is put a title on it. So I'm just trying to decide between journal or 2021 and I will show you what these look like. This is a new set of embellishments in my store at summerbaystudio.com called flower and twig embellishments. And you'll find a whole set there of them just amazing. There's over 100 pieces that you can cut and use for things like this. And these are just some of them. So what I've done is I've got the, this, this set in journal and in the year and in planner. So if you're making a planner, then you can choose from that. So choosing for the front of this is going to be tricky because they're all so pretty. But let's take away the ones that I'm not sure about the colors. That's a little too orange. So much. Now I 
can just do that. Wow, so nice. Or that. Or that. I'll take that one out. This one is nice because the pinks go in nicely with this. This one I like because of this font. Anyway, it's going to be one of those two, and let's see what it looks like with 2021. Wow, that's pretty as well. I think I like this one the best. So I just have to get some glue on that. And like I said, you can find all of these on my in my store. I had so much fun creating them. I did flower after flower, and then using graphic design, I put them all together in these beautiful embellishments that you can use on anything. Great for planners, or great for journals, great for scrapbooking. So there's today's project. I am so pleased with it. Now next time I will be decorating probably this page and a few others but as I go along I'll be tearing pages out and putting in new pages because if I don't the book will be too fat for its cover and I don't want that and because I'll be adding papers and paintings and all kinds of things then we want it to actually be able to close at the end of the year. So I hope you're as excited about this project as I am. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell. And if you're interested, here are some of my books. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>